If you see any of these RVs for sale in great condition and for a decent price, you should probably buy them. Don't buy a school bus to convert, don't buy a box truck, and please don't buy a $230,000 cargo van. Instead, head to Facebook Marketplace and if by some freak chance you come across a Vixen 21 motorhome, you gotta buy it. It was only built for three years in the late 1980s and only 587 of them were ever made. The good news, most of them are actually still on the road. They were designed by an engineer named Bill Collins who built a short, wide, and aerodynamic motorhome. Paired with a BMW M21 turbocharged diesel engine, this van life killer could actually get 30 miles per gallon and had a top speed of 100 miles per hour. And the crazy thing is that this 21 foot RV is actually a pusher, which means the engine is all the way in the back and you've got a trunk in the front of your rig. Honestly, this motorhome would make a sweet daily driver because it actually might even fit in your garage. And when you're ready to take it out camping, it has a pneumatic powered side mounted pop top, allowing for plenty of headroom in the rig. On top of that, it's got a functional and relatively tasteful level of fit and finish. But here's the problem, guys. You're probably not gonna find this for sale because everybody who owns one is gonna keep it forever. And if they do sell it, I'm gonna be right there to buy it. Sorry. It will, however, be a lot easier to come across a Bluebird Wander Lodge, and you especially want the ones built from 1987 to 1995 with an intercooled turbocharged Cat 3208 diesel engine. This is the only factory built RV made on a school bus chassis and with no less steel, meaning that this 31 to 40 foot tank won't crumple into a million pieces in a side on collision like your typical factory built RV. The level of fit and finish in these coaches are outstanding. I especially like the retro upper cabinets and the functional bench seating. Don't buy one with a gas engine because this bus is just too heavy at 40,000 pounds and you're likely to get three to five miles per gallon with a gas engine and more like eight with a diesel. So if you were thinking about buying a new Ford F-150 to tow a travel trailer made out of styrofoam and staples to the tune of $70,000, don't do it. Spend half as much on a rig like this that will outlast you. During your search, if you come across a Fleetwood RV built to protect you from dinosaur attacks, you should probably buy it. But do check for frame damage as I believe it fell off of a cliff. And if you come across a regular Fleetwood RV, skip it. It's not worth it. Now, if you'd rather buy a regular Class A coach and not a school bus or a weird BMW motorhome, keep an eye out for a pre-1996 Safari Trek. The Safari Trek is built on an Isuzu NPR truck chassis and it's paired with a four cylinder turbocharged diesel engine and it's one of the only RVs in this class that will get you 15 miles per gallon. It is estimated that only about 800 of these were ever made but many of them are still on the road. Don't expect to haul it up mountain passes at 85 because it's a little underpowered. However, the inside of this rig is built with solid wood, decent hardware and an electro magic bed. It is mounted over the driver's seat meaning that you can have a huge open floor plan Great for hosting, and when you're ready for bed, you just lower it, pop in, and you essentially got a much bigger motorhome. The exterior of the Trek RV is riveted aluminum, the roof is aluminum, and so you have a much more durable exterior finish than fiberglass sheets. Bonus points if you find one with a tastefully designed rear graphic because it's one of a kind, airbrushed, and who doesn't want to tell every car behind them that you love lions and cheetahs and panthers and stuff? I know I do. Now, if during your search you find one of three 1974 Camelot Cruisers, you gotta buy it. This one, in fact, just sold for $113,000, which just might be the steal of the century when you compare it to this equally priced Winnebago built on a Ram Promaster. I mean, come on, people, that is a no-brainer. You can have a chariot on wheels for the same price as a cargo van made by Winnebago. Well, I would argue that you will never see another Camelot Cruiser for sale, you will have a much easier time finding a GMC motorhome, which was manufactured from 1973 to 1978 by GMC and is the only self-contained motorhome to be built entirely by a major auto manufacturer. During this time, over 12,000 units were made and they were made pretty well. The body was mostly aluminum, which made for a durable and lightweight rig. I recommend a pineapple colored one with these incredible retro decals. Now the 1970s interior carpet and countertops might be borderline repulsive. The layout is pretty tasteful with a convertible guest bed couch in the front. Many of these also have flip down bunk beds and this one has a back bedroom that you can turn into a lounge for daytime use, which is kind of sweet. This motorhome actually shipped with a gasoline Oldsmobile engine, which is surprisingly reliable and still serviceable today with cheap parts. If you find one of these in great condition for cheap, you should buy it. By the way, if John Gilgem ever wants to sell his one-of-a-kind self-engineered amphibious 43-foot-long Class A coach, you should definitely buy it. Because who doesn't want to take their huge expensive rig on a body of water? I really do. 
John, if you're watching this, please let me know if you can help me engineer a float to put Gilligan Phantom on the water. Now you can probably find a Bigfoot RV with a garage built into the side of it. And if you do, you should consider buying it. Built on a Ford van chassis and paired with the venerable Power Stroke 7.3 liter diesel engine, this molded fiberglass rig is four season capable and one of the best in its class for the price. But the coolest part is that with that Ford van chassis, you can lift it up, convert it to true four wheel drive and pretend you own a $300,000 Earth Cruiser for a fraction of the cost. Now the departure angle might hinder you from going ham on overland tracks. If that's the case, you might wanna skip the garage version and buy the 24 foot classy Bigfoot RV. Now admittedly, the Bigfoot's interior is well made, however kind of bland. And if you'd like to do something about that, you could do what Brian did to his Starflight RV, also built on a Ford van chassis and turned into a total off-road beast, which you can watch in this video right here.